Okay, this is piece 158. Sorry, I don't have that number on the slide. It is the ruler's feather headdress, probably of Montezuma II. It is from the Mexica people. It is from the Aztec Empire. And the form of it is semicircular with 450 of the large green Quetzal feathers. It has gold ornamentation on it, although limited, much to the um, sadness of the Spanish who were after gold. And it has feathers, all of these feathers that are tied onto a, an, a strong netting, almost like a wicker frame on the back to make it be upright when it's being used. Its form is five feet across. This is the image from the Mexican Anthropology Museum. This image was from the Vienna Ethnology Museum. The content of this is that the major 450 feathers are taken from the male Quetzal bird that lives in the upper reaches of the rainforest further south of Mexico from like Honduras and Guatemala area. These birds <clears throat> produce two, one to three feathers in their lifetime. So when they're, these birds are captured and they remain pretty aloof from humans, they don't like to be um, kept in captivity. Um, many of them die in captivity. They, but they can um, have one feather taken away, not more than one. They're used for their flying, of course, and for attracting other mates. Um, and then the... Um, Contingo bird here, five inches to 20 inches in size. It produced the turquoise feathers that are down here in the center of the headdress. And two other birds that produce feathers are one, this rosette spoonbill, which is like a flamingo, kind of. Um, it produces these light feathers that are used. And then the squirrel cuckoo brown feathers, you can see them here. They're also um, used and so variety of birds and then what was also probably on this headdress is a beak of a bird that was uh, covered in gold but that's since been lost there is a lot of function for this piece so um, one of the first functions is that it these headdresses in general this one particularly but in general feather headdresses were worn by people of the upper class so you can see this parade shown in town this man who's a warrior he wears a headdress and the person on the litter who's of an upper class elite that person would have a headdress so that's one of its functions the second function of a headdress like this is that it would symbolize the fact that warriors were believed to return after their death as hummingbirds and so we see here the god Huitzilopochtli he is wearing feathers of a hummingbird, really bright feathers. And so you know, that's a, an additional like third function is that their gods are featured with feathers. And so um, they're much a part of religion of the Mexica people. Another function is that these were used in ceremonies and there were ceremonies where headdresses similar to ours could be shown on a pole, but it's more likely that our headdress is seen in this oil painting would have been worn by on someone's head. So the, and then the final function of this piece is that it could have been given as a gift to someone. Um, in this particular case, in this oil painting, it's being, it's, we're seeing Montezuma II meeting Hernan Cortez and the question here is, did Montezuma give Hernan Cortez this ruler's feather headdress, you know, as a as a a greeting for, you know, a another leader from another country? Uh, the other question is, or did Hernan Cortez take it? So here we see from a um, a diagram here, Cortez sitting negotiating with Montezuma the second. And below them are shown all these objects from the Aztec Empire. And so we do know that Hernan Cortes sent a shipload of stuff that was of interest back to Spain to the leader King Charles for his perusal and enjoyment. And so it could be that Hernan Cortes negotiated for the headdress. One, it's not been recorded. We don't know. 
Okay, in terms of context around this piece, it's important to know that the Aztec were engaged in long distance trade, and that's how they acquired all these different feathers that were used in something like the ruler's feather headdress. From as far south as Nicaragua, as far north as the Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Mississippi region, the Aztecs had very strong trade. And here we see at the base of Templo Mayor, a market that the Spanish documented as being the you know bigger than any market in Europe. I don't see in particular any, oh, there's birds for sure. Um, so uh, feathers would have been brought from long distance places and could have been traded in this market. More context is that um, in addition to gathering feathers from trade, feathers for like something like the ruler's feather headdress could have been gathered at the aviary that would have been um, in the emperor's palace and known as the house of birds. Uh, Spanish documentation says that as many as 300 people were needed to feed all the birds kept in the aviary there in the emperor's palace. In addition to having an aviary, aviary filled with birds, there was this group of feather workers known as the Amenteca, and you can see these images here from a codis, which we'll talk about soon, uh, that illustrates or shows, and this one's like the ruler's feather headdress for sure, shows workers making headdresses and tending to feathers and treating them before they were used. More modern day context is that here in Vienna at the Museum of Ethnology is where the ruler's feather headdress resides. And the Mexican uh, people have asked for that headdress to be returned. So such as this man, Mr. Gomez or Gomorra, excuse me. Um, he has been pushing Vienna to return the, the original ruler's feather headdress. Here's the original. Here is a duplicate that was given to Mexico in 1940, kind of like, hey, we're not going to send you back the real thing, but we're going to give you um, we're going to give you a, a duplicate. And uh, so. Um, Mr. Gomorrah here, though, has been asking for the he calls it the Quetzal feather headdress back, but the Vienna Museum of Ethnology says we can't give this back because it's way too fragile. And it's um, this is their their um, their stance is kind of supported, not not 100 percent, but just supported about the fact that feathers do not last very long, um, at least like this and feather headdresses. And so it's that's why we think that it was from Montezuma the second and probably couldn't have been from earlier leaders because they just they they disintegrate over time so not to validate them not returning the feather headdress but just to say that probably in terms of age it it, it couldn't be any older that's why this probably is part of our title probably a part of Madu, uh, montezuma's era okay and then finally final context is that feathers uh, were such an integral part of that mexica culture that here we have a painting that features a, a christian um, depiction of Isidore the laborer, but put on the painting are feathers from uh, ducks, hummingbirds, and canaries. So this persists in the in the culture, uh, valuing feathers. So we there we have the ruler's feather headdress from the Mexica or Aztec people.